Welcome back to The Hook on Woodward Sports Network. All right, guys, we promised you we would have him on the show right before we took the break. And my friends, we are delivering. Dan Hasty joins us here on The Hook. Welcome to the show, Dan. Hey, you guys. How are you? Good hey, Dan. Congratulations, you. man. I appreciate that, Tom. And, and let me just, if, if we can, a quick aside uh, for a quick Darren McCarty story. Of course. I think everyone has one. Of I just course. needed to get mine in. So uh, I remember being at a Great Lakes crossing, and that was back when GameWorks was still a thing. I think that was the name of it. Yes, it was. And we saw, we saw you, DMAC, and Shelly playing around. And I remember going up to you. And just talking about how happy we were. And this wasn't too long after you beat the crap out of Claude Lemieux. <laughs> and just thanking you for that. And I'll never forget, you and Shelly both looked at me and my friends and gave us this stupid amount of tickets that you guys had won over the course of your time there that afternoon. I'll never forget that. Dude, I, dude that, see, that's what I say is that this world is really <laughs> small. And, and obviously you and I are, are, must be doing something well because the circle closes back around here. I hope that you got something good with those tickets and, you know, so that that works out. But how about talking to us? about how did it go down of getting the call when you were like uh when you found out that you were going to be doing the game with uh with Jim Price yesterday cuz Double D had to go and fill in uh with Jack to do the TV uh broadcast. How does yesterday play out for you? <laughs> well, uh I had just finished up a, a workout in the morning and I had been planning to take care of my 8-month-old daughter all day. So I had a full day of veggie tales on Netflix in my future. <laughs> and so and so then you get a phone call to go to the big league. So life comes at you fast. Uh, but what happened was was the phone rang. I didn't answer it. I remember looking down and I saw it was the Tigers. And I was like, that's kind of weird for them to call on a Sunday at 1130 in the morning. But I was taking care of our daughter. I just didn't have the time to, to take that. So anyway, I got a text message immediately saying, hey, can you call me as soon as possible? And, of course, at that point, having, you know, worked my whole life for that potential phone call, you never really admit to yourself that this might be that moment. You kind of just put it off. You're kind of like, ah, no, it's going to be about something else. So when that text came in, that was kind of the dog whistle. That was kind of where I was like, oh, maybe something's happening here. And so then I said, yeah, can I call you back in five minutes? And it was at that point where they had texted and they said, here's the situation. Dan's moving over to TV we would like to see if you'd be able to do radio for us. <laughs> and and it's at that point where it, it finally hits you because you keep denying it to yourself internally. And then you finally get that message. And, um, and, and then there was just a lot of thoughts, a lot of emotions. Uh, and so, of course, I can confidently tell you it did not take me a full five minutes to call them back. I can promise you that. Uh. That's amazing. And, you know, Dan, you can still tell the excitement in your voice um, from it. You had this great tweet that went out, said, for all of those who grew up wanting to be the next Ernie Hardwell, today is for you. I was one myself. This afternoon, Jim Price and I bring you the call of the Tigers um, at Athletics from Oakland Coliseum and then at um, 971, the ticket TXYT. Let's do this. Um what were your nerve levels? I mean, when you first got to go. So there were a couple of things that had had a few nerves because I mean I've I've been nervous for every broadcast at, at some level, some more than others. Uh, but yesterday, uh, I think the first thing was that, and you know, you know, whether this be any level of broadcasting, if if you find out that you've got a game within hours. And much of that time for me, because I'm in Grand Rapids, was spent in the car getting from Grand Rapids to Detroit. So I had zero prep time. So everything that went on the air on Sunday afternoon was with no prep for that specific day's game. All I had time to do was write out a lineup and go. (laughs) By that point, it was time for first pitch. So there was that. There was also the fact that I hadn't called baseball on the radio in almost two years. I called games for the West Michigan Whitecaps in Grand Rapids. They didn't play minor league baseball last season. So the last time that I called baseball was September of 2019. So there was that. Number three, there was also, we were calling games off of monitors. We were not in Oakland. We were calling games from behind home plate at Comeric Park. 
So there were a number of different challenges associated with it. But I can confidently tell you that none of that even mattered in the slightest because we were just so excited to be there. That's great. And Jim was sitting beside you, obviously, and uh, you had help there. I'm sure the Tigers have got their people handing you stuff and uh, had to make it a little easier because it couldn't be that easy uh, in the A affiliate. I mean, it, it, in the majors, they, they put everything right there for you. It's, it's on the plate for you. <laughs> well, you know, we did have, we did have the help from a, from a sound perspective. We did have some help from an information perspective. And, you know, even going into the situation where there hadn't been really any time to do any prep work for that day's game, I, I, I mean, I had been preparing for that opportunity for 20 years. So even if I hadn't done any work for that specific day's game, everything I had done leading up to that point was with that in mind. So even if I wasn't as you know technically prepared for that day's game, I was ready. So And it went well. I was really excited about how it went, given the circumstances especially. No, absolutely. Talked to Dan Hasty to his first uh, Major League Baseball game with uh, our buddy Jim Price on Major wow. League Baseball. I, li- I listened to uh, – <laughs> I listened to a couple innings, and, and, dude, you didn't sound out of place at all. You sounded comfortable, but, you know, back and forth, um, which gets to the point, Dan, is exactly what I preach, is that it's, it's great, and I implore everybody to have a goal, to shoot for that goal, to put it in there, but you have to be ready because it's not up to you when that opportunity is going to present itself, but you got to grasp it, so as much as as you said you were nervous or at different times even till now that you do get nervous the fact that you knew this is what you wanted i love that tweet it gave me chills because no matter if it's ernie harwell or if it's lance paris behind the plate or if it's darren mccarty on the ice it's people attaining their goals now what was your favorite part of yesterday now that you get to sort of let it sink in and and sit down did you have a favorite part or favorite call or you know, I mean, I know you did, you so, know, I, I, before I quit, because, bro, two airs in the ninth with you in the booth, you know, you're on you're on thin water, bro. I can't protect you when they lose like that because the guy, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm going to do my best because we have this connection from back in the day, um, you know, at Great Lakes Crossing. But what was your favorite part of yesterday? Well, you know, look, you always have to be ready, right? I mean, you didn't know where you were going to get the puck at center ice in game four of the Stanley Cup finals. You know what I mean? You, you got it, and you had to figure out what to do with it. So that's just what you do. You make the best of what you have. So, you know, look, I would say the favorite part for me didn't come – I mean, I, of course, there were some calls that I really enjoyed. I, I loved having a chance to see, you know, a, a go-ahead two-run base hit in the later stages of the game. Thankfully, that game actually was good from start to finish. I mean, a couple of, the, a couple of games before – number one, had been on the West Coast late. So games, you know, going from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., if you're down 6 nothing in the third, people are going to bed. So at least in that perspective, it's a Sunday afternoon. It's an interesting game. So all nine innings are interesting. So I was grateful for that. And, yeah, of course, there were some big strikeouts down the stretch. There were some big plays. But probably the thing I enjoyed most was – the drive from Grand Rapids to Detroit and in in doing that reaching out to you know my wife reaching out to my folks reaching out to the guy who was the best man at my wedding because every single one of them knew from the moment that I had met them essentially that this was the goal this was what I wanted to do this was what I wanted to be I was waiting for this day so you know it's it's kind of a it's kind of a hard game to play because there's so many people who also want to do this and that's why I was thinking about everybody else who had, you know, listened to Ernie Harwell growing up and had ran into him on the concourse and, in my case, tugged on his coat and brought him over to his mother so he could introduce them. You know, it was those kind of moments that I just I think about everybody else in that situation who would love to be in that spot. And that's why it really affected me the way it did. Hey, Dan, we're not going to keep you much longer, but I want to we appreciate what you've done. I'm, I'm happy for you, very happy for we all are. But... Are you going to be waiting outside the booth and maybe take day, double D out, maybe knock out, uh, uh, you know, uh, the TV guy, uh, our guy, Matt Shepard? Uh, are you going to ask him, hey, give me another shot at this, guys. Take a day off. 
<laughs> I will certainly be be just fine if they ever want to take another day off. Now, I do have responsibilities with West Michigan. Oh, yeah. Of course, the Whitecaps are now a, a high-class A affiliate of the Detroit Tigers, and that's a big difference from being low-class A. Why? That's literally the difference between probably getting Spencer Torkelson, the first overall pick in last year's draft, and not getting him. So I think we'll have him. And, again, too many people focus on where they wish they were and don't focus enough on where they are. So I'm just – I have so many people in West Michigan that are just so excited about this team and leaning on us and our broadcast. And all, all I want to do is make sure that we give them what they deserve and the rest will take care of itself. I'm fully you're, confident with that. You're in a great spot, Dan. You're in the best part of Michigan. Western Michigan is primo, primo territory uh, in our state. So congratulations and uh, much more success to you in the, in the upcoming future here, kid. Yeah, good luck, Really enjoyed Dan. it. Thank you, guys. Thanks All right. so much for coming Dan on Dan Hasty, show. the voice of the Whitecaps, and got to live a dream a little earlier than expected. Got to fill in for Dan Dickerson on the radio as Dan sat in for a Matt Shepard on the TV yesterday.